friends in this video we are going to see management of a posterior capsular rent posterior capsular rent has occurred in this case and it is a huge rent and there are two nuclear fragments still remaining what to do now there are many ways to manage this let us see how i managed this case first thing is i lift the pieces and inject some visco behind this pieces to prevent drop of these nuclear pieces into the vitreous cavity once a piece a nuclear piece drops into the vitreous cavity it becomes a very time consuming surgery and management of this is still uh, time consuming but it is still in my hand once it goes into the vitreous cavity it is in the domain of uh, we are surgeon so i have placed visco behind the pieces and now i'm going to enlarge the wound uh, by a keratom the limbal wound is i have planned to extend this you can plan a separate you know uh, sclerocorneal tunnel but in this case the nuclear pieces appeared small and i thought i can just enlarge little bit and bring these pieces out so here goes the keratom and from on end of the wound i go towards sclera and enlarge the wound in this way so size of this wound is about 4 or 4.5 mm inject visco again and now i take a fish hook which i made from a 30 gauge bent needle and using that fish hook to remove these pieces this is one piece comes out and then i go again and bring the other pieces other piece also both the pieces have come out and now the epinucleus is still remaining now i depress the wound and most of the epinucleus comes out but the thing is along with this vitreous also is going to come out so at this time i inject visco here to push the vitreous down and then depress the wound and i find that you no know, most of the ep epinucleus has come out but this is not coming out and already there is lot of vitreous in the wound and now how to proceed wash this area and now this is kenacort kenacort means trimsinolone acetate and i wash the area and this is the vitreous little bit of fluid injected into the anterior chamber i found that this lens matter is not going to come out it is mixed with vitreous so i have to remove some you know have to remove some 
vitreous make this area free of vitreous humor and then this lens matter will come out still I am trying to remove as much lens matter as possible because once I go with the cutter this lens matter is likely to drop into the vitreous cavity now I need a side port on the right side I had only one side port at around 2 o'clock the main wound, main incision was at 11 o'clock. The main incision has been extended towards 12 o'clock. This is a side port at 8 o'clock. Irrigation goes through this new side port at 8 o'clock. And here, before I use the irrigation, I am using uh, the cutter to remove some more lens matter before it drops into the vitreous cavity. Yes, I have removed some few, you know, small epinuclear pieces are going to drop. But when I will do anterior vitrectomy, uh, they may again come to the tip. Many teachers will advise to do uh, parse planar vitrectomy. That is also a good way, maybe better way, but this is also a fairly good way to manage the case. And this patient did very well in the postoperative period, had no complaints at all. And now I am going to remove this vitreous from the wound with vana scissor that has prolapsed out through the main wound. And this is the you know lens matter mixed with vitreous. trying to remove this with the Simcoe yes partially successful and now see what happens as I try to remove this cortex I catch some vitreous strands so I stay there and use the Simco as irrigation cannula and cut the vitreous around the aspirating port of the Simco. There are machines where you have you no. Know, cut uh, you can switch between cut and aspirate and then aspirate and cut but this machine has only cut and aspirate so this is again I have caught some vitreous stands I stop use the cutter and make the area free of vitreous strands. And now the cortex is nicely removed. There is some chemosis. And when the chemosis is, you know, quite significant, it causes some problems in visibility. So I made some punctures in the 
Kanyangtiba. Made some small cuts. And now is the time to place the intraocular lens. Inject some visco between the anterior capsular rim and the iris. And now I take the uh, sensor multipiece lens and I'm going to check if it goes through the wound. No, it's not going. It's the wound size is only 4 or 4.5 millimeter and the optic size is 6 millimeter. I don't want to cut this incision and make it bigger. Rather, I'll use this cartridge fold this lens and then place the lens in the sulcus and this in this case the rexis size was good it was 5 millimeter and optic capture was possible at the end So here goes the lens, I turn it clockwise, the cartridge is turned clockwise so that the haptic goes and touches the iris and then it goes in the sulcus. Then I turn the cartridge anti-clockwise so that the optic is placed, it comes out parallel to the iris. And now, some more visco. Hold the trailing haptic with the MacPherson's forceps and place this trailing haptic in the sulcus. There is other ways you can place it over the iris and then dial it and it goes in the you know, sulcus. Now see, there is some white thing sticking to the on the back of the op, you know, optic of the intraocular lens. So this is something you know, which, has, which was there in the passes of the cartridge and it is sticking there. And this is the you know, mox, uh, this is Kenacord and I find that there is no vitreous in the anterior chamber. Then I go behind and aspirate the matter that was sticking with the optic of the intraocular lens and it comes out. Again I go with the cutter because I had some doubt that I am catching the vitreous strands. And see, the optic capture has occurred at this time. Uh, but I want to go behind the lens once again. Yes, and some uh, lens matter is coming to the tip. No, yes, this lens matter is. over the lens and then it came out. All the vitreous strands should be nicely removed.
again uh, no now I place an air bubble in the anterior chamber at least on suture must be put at the wound in such cases so here I am going to place on a suture I didn't want to put visco because then some visco will drop into the vitreous cavity. So I'm trying to maintain the anterior chamber with air and place the suture. Air comes out again, I put air. And now the you know suture is being put this is a three uh, two on one knot this is two this is on and then another on two throughs on through and then again on more through so two on on suture and I am going to bury this bury the knot in this sclera yes the knot has gone in this sclera And now uh, this is moxifloxacin. The side ports are closed now. And then finally, this is the final lavage and optic capture. Yes, you can see the optic capture, you can see ovalization of the excess margin. Once the lens, the optic is captured like this, Centration is going to be very good and patient will do very well in the postoperative period. Thank you very much for your attention.